Syracuse football was picked 12th in the ACC media poll. Should they have been ranked a little bit higher than that? You are Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, and thank you for making us your first listen of every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day and we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on today's show, we're going over a trio of topics. First, we're going to start off with Syracuse football being ranked 12th in the ACC media poll. I think they should have been higher than that, to be honest with you. Demetrius Samuel decides to flip his commitment from Syracuse to Florida and also reclassify to 2025. Remember, Demetrius Samuel was one of the trio of 2026 Orange commits, but no longer. He's going to be a Gator. And Syracuse basketball recruiting news, a Caden Lewis is officially or unofficially visiting today. So that's something to definitely keep an eye on and something to go over here on today's podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Let's go over Syracuse football being ranked twelfth in the ACC media poll. And my first reaction was a little bit lower than I thought. I thought they would be ranked maybe in the upper half, but no, I thought they were going to have higher expectations, but it turns out, I think the Syracuse fan base, myself included, has higher expectations for this team than the media does. And to be completely honest with you all, I understand where the media is coming from. And I'm also not particularly mad at the poll to be honest with you, because what, what's the difference, right? If they're ranked first, ranked 12th, at the end of the day, it's all going to be settled out on the field, right? This is just a preseason poll. But I get where the media is coming from, and let me explain my reasoning. Here are the ACC finishes for Syracuse since 2018. Okay, so 2018 was a really good year, obviously, for Syracuse. They won 10 games, including the bowl win, of course. They were second in the Atlantic Division. This was before the ACC just became one instead of two separate divisions in football, right? Now it's one. But back then, they were second in the Atlantic. Since that point, Syracuse has never really finished well within its own conference. In 2019, they were sixth in their division. So that's not great. There's only seven of them total. In 2020, they were last in the entire conference. Remember that was the COVID year and they finished dead last. They won one game all season. That was week three against Georgia Tech. Shout out Georgia Tech for being the one win right there. In 2021, they were last in their division. That was a season where they went five and seven and missed a bowl game, even though they were on the verge of clinching. I remember they were five and four and then lost the final three regular season games. I believe the final game came against Pitt and Kenny Pickett. They lost that game in the dome. Didn't make a bowl game that year. In 2022, which was a pretty good year for Syracuse by Syracuse standards, to be honest with you, right? They finished seven and five overall, but they were still fifth out of seventh in their division in the ACC, which is obviously not great. And that was a pretty good Syracuse team with Sean Tucker, Matthew Bergeron, Schrader had a pretty good year, right? Good defense. They started 6-0, ended up 7-5, and lost the bowl game, and they were fifth out of seven in their division. Not great. And then last season, last season they were 11th out of the entire conference. That being said, The media is not buying Syracuse just yet. That is what this poll is telling you because they're looking at the previous results. 2019 through 2023, where they are consistently in the bottom half of the ACC. The media is looking at that and they're saying to Syracuse, you're going to be ranked 12th and you're going to have to prove why you should be higher over the course of the season. That's the best part, though. I think Syracuse football is going to be better than 12th 
in the ACC this season. It is difficult to imagine there being 11 teams better than the Orange when you just look at their roster and this being the best roster on paper in quite some time. And the fact that they have a the easiest schedule in the country in the Power Four. Right? I think they're going to be better than 12th. And they probably should have been picked higher than 12th. But the media is saying, hey, you got a first-year head coach, right? That's a concern. First-year head coach. He's a great recruiter, but can he actually coach? Yeah, you brought in Kyle McCord from Ohio State, but it's not Ohio State. It's Syracuse. A little bit different, right? I understand we got some weapons, but we don't have Marvin Harrison. That's for sure. We don't have Emeka Ibuka. That's for sure. I get where the media is coming from. Syracuse in the past five seasons has never been an upper half team in the conference. The last time they were in the upper half was, of course, in 2018 when they won nine regular season games and then completed it, uh, won the bowl game and got their 10th win. I get it. Let's just hope Syracuse is better than 12th. I think if Syracuse does finish 12th, that would be a disappointment unless, unless somehow eight and four overall four and four in the conference would net them 12th. I think they're going to be better overall. Leave a comment in the comment section below where you have Syracuse finishing in the ACC. I have them in the upper half of the conference, but I'm not an expert on every single ACC team out there. I get where the media is coming from. From a recency standpoint, Syracuse football has not been in the upper half of the ACC since 2018. I understand that it really, at the end of the day, it's all going to be settled on the field. So hopefully this team could use the fact that they're picked 12th in the media poll as motivation. Maybe they can use it as motivation and this team would just, you know, put it on the bulletin board, so to speak, whenever they go into the, uh, into the conference games. So overall, those are my thoughts on Syracuse finishing 12th or being picked 12th in the ACC preseason poll. Now coming up, Some uh, not-so-great news on the Syracuse football recruiting front. It's one thing to watch baseball on TV that at times can get pretty boring, but going to a game in person is an awesome experience. I'm looking forward to watching the Mets for the rest of the summer. The way I'll watch them in person is by using Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace in Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. All I have to do is go to Game Time. And search the team you want to see of your choosing. It can be MLB or any league for that matter. And ticket options will appear right away. And my favorite part is the all-in pricing feature. Toggling this feature shows the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, and redeem code Locked On College. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the streaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. Welcome back, everyone, into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, and on today's show, we're going over a trio of topics. We started off discussing the fact that Syracuse football was picked 12th in the preseason media poll in the ACC, which is lower than I expected, but at the same time, I explained, I understand where the media is coming from because the Orange haven't been an upper-half ACC team since 2018, that magical year where they won 10 games, right? So I understand it. They got to... Show it. They got to show that they got to be better than 12th. They're not just going to anoint them right off the bat. And I understand that, even though I would have picked them higher, of course. Now, uh, some not so great news on the recruiting trail for Syracuse football and Fran Brown. If you recall, Syracuse football had a trio of commits in the class of 2026. They were all four stars. 
That is no longer the case as Demetrius Samuel, a 2026 four-star player, top 80 overall in the country, flipped his commitment last night from Syracuse to the University of Florida. And not only that, not only did he flip his commitment, he also reclassified to 2025. So now he, he's not going to, he's not in the class of 2026 anymore. He is in the class of 2025 and he is committed to the university of Florida. This is a kid who can play defensive back. He can play wide receiver. When I spoke to his high school coach months ago on the podcast, he spoke very highly of the program and how Syracuse through the coach's perspective was doing a great job of recruiting Demetrius Samuel Obviously, I'm not mad at Demetrius Samuel, and I wish him nothing but the best. He's made a decision that is best for himself, obviously. But it's still a bummer, of course, as a a fan of this team, as someone who's covering this team. Yeah, I would have wanted a top 80 player in the country to stay committed to Syracuse. But at the end of the day, it's just a verbal commitment. That's all it is. He wanted to reclassify to 2025. He gets that wish, and he's going to an SEC program in Florida, even though their coach is a sitting duck right now. But the big thing I take away from Demetrius Samuel ultimately decommitting and flipping to Florida is the fact that there are still two players left in the class of 2026, and it is sort of important to hang on to them. I say sort of because there's plenty of time to recover. I mean, this was a class of 2026 guy. I know he eventually reclassified to 2025, but he's 2026 and that's down the ways away for everyone, even though you kind of have to keep it on your radar. There's still time to recover, obviously, but there are two players currently in the class. Both of them are four stars, both of which Brian Smith, locked on recruiting experts said are going to be pretty tough to hang on to. First of all, Isaiah Williams, a six foot, 200 pound linebacker, also from Florida, like Demetrius Samuel. He's a top 40 player overall in the country. This is going to be difficult to keep. I I don't know how else to say it. It's going to be very difficult to keep Isaiah Williams. I'm glad that Syracuse is at least the incumbent that they have him for now, but at the same time, it ain't going to be easy to keep him. Hopefully they can. Hopefully they can, but you're they're, they're over a year away from him actually being able to sign because he's in the class of 2026. There's also Deontay Sheffy, the running back, 190 pounds, five foot 10. He's from Pennsylvania. Penn State, as of right now, has not been actively recruiting him. So that's positive news on the Syracuse front. He is a 24-7 sports composite four-star player. And when I spoke to Brian Smith last week and had him on the podcast, he said that Sheffy was probably going to be the easiest of the three to hang on to over the next year plus. But at the same time, if Penn State gets involved with him, that could be trouble for Syracuse football. So there's plenty of time to bounce back in the class of 2026. So on a scale of one to 10 of, 10 being a big deal, one being no big deal. I'd put it at about a five because Demetrius Samuel was a heck of a recruit. Top 80 overall player in the country. I don't know if Syracuse is going to have a top 80 overall player in the country when all is said and done in 2026. But the reason why it's only a five is because they got a year plus to be able to figure it out. So not so great news on the Syracuse football recruiting front. I wish I had better news for you all. I wish I could say, hey, Demetrius Samuel is staying with Syracuse, but I can't. He's flipping to the University of Florida, which means Syracuse has two players left in the class, and hopefully they can recover. They got plenty of time to do it. Hopefully they can find a replacement in that class. Now coming up, positive news on the recruiting front, but we're switching gears to Syracuse basketball. 
Passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships, is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back, everyone, into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer. On today's show, we have gone over the Orange being picked 12th in the preseason ACC football media poll and why I thought, well, I would have picked them higher. I understand where the media is coming from. And ultimately, does it really matter? No, because the games have to be played and the games haven't been played just yet. Then we talked about Demetrius Samuel, a 2026 four-star recruit flipping his commitment from Syracuse to the University of Florida. And not only did he flip his commitment, he reclassified to 2025. So no Demetrius Samuel for Syracuse anymore. That being said, it's still only verbal commits, right? 2025 guys can't sign until November. It's only August right now. Happy first day of August, by the way, to all of you. Football season. This is the, we're going to have football this month. Side note here, we're going to have football this month. Pro football, obviously, tonight with the preseason, the Hall of Fame game. Obviously, college football, Syracuse football is going to be this month. We're going to have college and NFL until February. So, happy August. Football season is rapidly approaching, and it's great. I love football. Hope you guys love football, too. And This could be a very nice Syracuse football season, so let's see what happens. Now let's talk about basketball, okay? Because, come on, it's basketball, right? We got good news on the recruiting front in the class of 2025, which I have said could be a very, very special class for Syracuse football or basketball. Could be top five overall in the country when all is said and done. And be honest with you, it wouldn't be that much of an improvement from last season because they were number 10 in the country overall and on three with Donnie Freeman and Elijah Moore. But anyways, here's the news. The hard hitting journalism for you all. A Caden Lewis, a consensus four-star recruit, six foot two, 170 pounds. He's a guard from Maryland DMV area. That is nice. He is unofficially visiting campus today. He is By the time you're watching this, already on campus, I have seen the pictures on social media. So he's there. He is unofficially visiting. He is ranked as high as 34th in the country over on 24-7 Sports. And this is someone that is shooting up the recruiting rankings this summer. His final eight, all right, the final eight. Syracuse, of course, is in that mix. Also, Auburn, Duke, Kentucky, Michigan, UConn, North Carolina, and Tennessee. Not only is he unofficially visiting Syracuse today, he is unofficially visiting Duke on August 5th. So keep an eye out on for that. He is also also unofficially visited. I know I'm throwing a lot at you. UNC, Kentucky, and UConn. And I think I read somewhere that he is going to visit, unofficially visit, every single place in his top eight. The key with this recruitment and really any of the recruits for that matter, but a Caden Lewis definitely applies to this because he is a guard is to outline two plans. Okay. Two plans for a Caden Lewis. The first is what if a Caden Lewis is the only guard that ends up committing to Syracuse basketball in 2025? What if he's the only one, right? Right now they have Sadiq, but Sadiq White is a five-star forward. He can play small forward, power forward, et cetera. He's a forward, not a guard, okay? What if a Caden Lewis is the only guard that commits? So you got to outline the plan with him as to what they're going to do. The second is, which is far more complicated in my opinion, what if he's not the only guard? What if they get three guards? 
right? Kyan Anthony is a is a guard, maybe could play small forward at the next level. He's got to grow and fill out his frame more if that were to be the case, but maybe he can move to the three. But as of now, you've got to consider him a two guard. He could bring along Tyler Jackson with him, who's a one. So what do you do with the Caden Lewis if he were to commit? What about Derek Dixon, who recently included Syracuse in his final six? He's a guard as well, six foot two. You've got to outline those two plans. And I'm sure the coaching staff would know better than I would as to what they are going to do. So that's the good news on that front. I'm just here saying what they actually have to do as far as planning, how the coaching staff determines that is ultimately up to them. Now, for those that might be concerned about this recruitment, and let's be honest, there's there's no guarantee that they're going to get them. There's no guarantee they get a Caden Lewis. They can. There's no guarantee, though. But for those that are concerned that a Caden Lewis might not pick Syracuse because the playing time in his freshman season or the fact that they're they're at the front runner for Kai and Anthony and Tyler Jackson, those are guards. So what are they going to do if they get another guard? Is he going to have to compete at Syracuse for playing time? Would he really go to Syracuse for that? Here's my answer, all right, regarding a Caden Lewis's recruitment. I'm going to read you his top eight once again, because it's going to prove my point here. I'm going to read you a Caden Lewis's top eight once again for those that may be concerned that Syracuse can't offer the playing time. All right, here's the top eight. Syracuse, okay, got to include ourselves. Auburn, Duke, Kentucky, Michigan, UConn, North Carolina, Tennessee. I'll let that marinate for a little bit for you all. Let me let, 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 marinate. What do you notice about those eight schools? Where exactly is a Caden Lewis going to go where he is guaranteed playing time right off the bat? Where is he going to go? I get it. He's a very solid prospect. I'm not calling him a bad prospect or dissing him or any of that matter. But if you look at that top eight, those are stud programs. Those are some of the premier programs in the country. Those are blue bloods on there. And then the non-blue bloods, I mean, I don't consider Syracuse a blue blood. But it's still Syracuse, a story program. Auburn has been very, very solid in recent years. Really good. Michigan. Tennessee, there's no guaranteed playing time anywhere in that top eight. None. Okay, so let's say Caden Lewis does pick one of those other stools that and, and they don't get another guard in the class. He's still not guaranteed to start there because those stools can also get transfers. So regardless, if you are concerned that Syracuse might not really have a chance for him because where are they going to play him? What's the playing time? I wouldn't be concerned about that because those schools, they, they can't guarantee him playing time either. No matter where a Caden Lewis goes, and assuming he sticks within his top eight, he's going to have to fight, not for a roster spot, but fight for playing time. So don't be concerned that, oh, you know, the, the Syracuse might get a lot of guards. A Caden Lewis probably won't come here because they're going to get a lot of guards in the recruiting class. No matter where he goes, he's going to have to fight. I don't mean literally fight. I mean, try to get playing time, regardless of where he ends up. So you know, let's just see what happens. It's good to have him on campus, right? He's going to Duke on August 5th, as I mentioned. So you know, this could be a very, very special 2025 recruiting class. They're on a lot of final lists and everything like that. And they're not going to get every single player that they're on. But you're hoping to get at least two to three more. And maybe a big man too. But they're only offering two big men. That's Asher Elson and, and Chris Sinak. And I haven't seen really much with Syracuse yet on Chris Sinak. They probably have a higher chance at Elson, to be honest with you. So let's just see what happens. But the positive news is that Akaden Lewis is on campus today. That's good. Hopefully, he does commit because, hey, having a lot of talent, having a lot of 
really high four-star guards in a recruiting class is a good problem to have. That's called a good problem, having lots of talent. Thank you for making Locked On Syracuse your first listen of the day. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On College Football Podcast. Spencer McLaughlin gets you ready for an exciting season on the gridiron with discussion on the upcoming season and the ever-changing landscape of college athletics, including conference realignment, the transfer portal, NIL, new college football expanded playoffs, and more. Locked On College Football is available for available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day and as far as this video is concerned that is it but tomorrow we got poll friday coming up which is how would you or when would you consider syracuse basketball back back to where they used to be back to glory so to speak and i gave you guys four choices i think the voting is closed by the time you are watching this video so it's going to be very very interesting and i can't wait to give you guys my thoughts on when I would consider Syracuse basketball back, because I think it's a very interesting topic. Thank you guys so much for watching this podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you like this video, click that like button. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications. So you know right away when I am dropping the next podcast and everyone take care.